Hi there, this is a video for grade 6 students as we're studying data management and uh, the reason why we have a separate video for grade 6s is, is because grade 7s are studying circle graphs while grade 6s are studying another form of bar graphs. And today we're going to be studying stacked bar graphs. And before you, you can see an example of a stacked bar graph, this is a um, it, it, it's obviously an incomplete graph. There are some miss, missing labels, but what we're looking at is expenses by month. So we would assume that this is for uh, you know families or households, and that the expenses are shown with what are called stacked bars. So if we look at you know each bar, we can see that we have groups of uh, households, and that in each bar. There are one, two, three, four pieces of data, and those four pieces of data are reflected on a legend. So a stacked bar graph has a legend that needs to be included. So let's highlight that. That's, that is an important detail, that there are these legends that have to go along with the stacked bar graph. So if we look at the bar graph, we can say, okay, what's the total expense that this group of uh, households has to uh, take on, and it's between increments of 800 and 1,000, and it's a little closer to 1,000. This is probably about 200, or sorry, about uh, 920 dollars would be an estimate, and estimates are fine when we're dealing with this sort of information. For the next group, we have a stacked bar graph, which looks really similar, but it's a little bit higher, and uh, that's because that there would be little bits more for each of the categories. So this, fam this, this group of families pays a little bit more for gasoline, a little bit more for food, a little bit more for rent, and a little bit more for utility, with a total probably about 930. Okay, and then we have the, this next bar graph, which is the highest expense group, with a total expense probably around one, um, or sorry, 1100 uh, or 1130 is my estimate. And then finally we have the last group, which is, you know, if we draw a little bit of a line, it's somewhere between 920 and 930, we can make an estimate that's 925 is the total. But what a stacked bar graph does is it shows us that you know, a statistic like monthly expenses could be a single bar, but this bar tells us more information. It tells us, you know, what's in, how that, those monthly expenses are broken down. So for example, you know, the fuel cost might be something like uh, $40, sorry, the gasoline cost, whereas the food cost is probably, it's going to be less than 200 and we'd have to subtract that 40 so probably 150 that the uh, the rent cost is just below 200 and rising to uh, above 600 so 200 400 let's estimate that's probably third, probably 40 plus a little 5 so then we'll call it uh, 445 and then we have that last bar which is for utilities and we have to make an estimation to see how much uh, makes up that expense probably about 210 or maybe 215 and then ideally these estimates would round up to our grand estimate or were, would add up to our grand estimate we're not going to check the arithmetic on this because um, uh, we're dealing with some fairly complex data. And this, this image is really just meant to show you that we can show more than one piece of information in each bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this next bar graph, which is, you know, um, we have a data set, we have an a y-axis and an x-axis uh, already set up for us. Um, the data set shows that we have a title, and now we have to graph the height of students in a grade six, seven split class. So I'm gonna get my pen out, and I'm gonna use my drawing tool, we use shapes here, 
So in the first group, we have students who are 120 to 140 centimeters tall. For grade sixes, there are two students. You notice that we're counting by increments of three here. So we are going to be doing that little bit of estimation. Right? And then we have our grade sixes. So we're going to want to color it in. And we'll use the green highlighter for that. And let's carry on with the grade seven. That there's only one. And so let's draw that in. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm working digitally. Uh, and let's highlight, highlight that. And we'll assign blue to this group. Now by now, based on what you were doing on Friday and on Thursday, you know that we could do definitely do a better job. Uh, but what this bar shows us is that in the grade 6-7 class, there are three students who are of this range of height. But two of them are grade 6 and one of them is a grade seven. So let's continue with the next bit, uh, which is 140 to 160 centimeters tall. There are three grade six students. So we will draw that bar and it is a bar graph. This is not continuous data. Uh, so we are going to draw that bar and then we'll you know, go ahead and draw the grade seven bar on top of that which is two more students. And based on our increments, we have to use a bit of an estimation and let's shade it in. Okay, so what we've done is we've now shown the height of the grade seven student, or uh, of the students who are 140 to 160 centimeters tall. We see that there are three grade six students and two grade seven students. Now I'm not gonna finish this bar graph because that's actually gonna be some of your seat work today, uh, that you will be uh, drawing this graph and sharing a picture with your teacher. Uh, but what we will do is we will add a legend to our work and that is important, as we saw above, that the legend helps us see what each bar represents. And so we'll include our legend here. And we'll throw in our color coordination that the grade sevens are blue and the grade sixes are green. Now, the other thing that we need to do is we need to find out what is the sample size? And we would do that by looking at the data specifically, and I'm not actually going to, uh, to answer that question. Instead, remember that the short forms for sample size is N, And what I need to do is also include a title in the graph. There we go. Uh, and now there's definitely some room for improvement. We noticed that the title is, is it actually in a little bit of the space for the data. Uh, but what you will be doing for the rest of your work in this section is 
to complete the graph. Identify the mean height of all students and determine the sample size. Okay, so as I said, your job is to complete the graph on graph paper and to um, use the skills we developed at the end of the week last week, which was to draw these beautiful graphs with all these details, and then also to determine the mean height of all students and the mean height, um, the median height of all students, as well as determine the sample size. And then on top of that, we are going to add this little detail. that you need to determine the mean height and of both grade six students on their own and of grade seven students on their own. So you're actually uh, in a position where you need to do a little bit of thinking about how are you going to communicate this carefully on your graph. So that's a big part of the work for the day. Um, and thank you very much for watching this. Take care.